Hey, it's Mr. Lineski with the top five in under five. I'm going to try to keep it under five for units on circles. So let's get started. Our first thing is the vocab for the circles. A lot of vocabulary we gave you. So just given this image here with center C for a circle C, uh, we have the diameter. If you remember, a diameter is a specific type of chord. Uh, it has two endpoints that are on the circle, and it goes through the center of the circle. The radius is half of the diameter, so it goes from the center point to a point on the circle. So CD would be an example of that. A chord is any segment that has endpoints on the circle. So that would be an example like DG here. Uh, it has two endpoints on the circle. A tangent is a type of line uh, where it goes through the circle uh, and it passes at one point. Remember, if I had two circles um, that share a tangent, so if I just drew a little circle up here, I would now call that a common tangent line. A secant is a line that goes through the circle at two specific points. So here, HI is our example of a secant. A central angle is an angle that has this uh, the vertex at the center of the circle. An example of that would be angle ACD. An inscribed angle is an angle where the vertex is on the circle. So an example of that would be AFE. A minor arc is any arc that's measure is less than 180 degrees. Minor arcs are always is interpreted as two letters. A major arc is any arc that is above 180 degrees. That is always uh, indicated with three letters. And you just kind of follow along the outside of the circle. Arcs are always outside the circle. And then a semicircle is half of the circle. Usually you can find one of those by looking for a diameter. Semicircles equal 180 degrees. All right, let's move on to number two. Number two is all those different angles. So question you always want to ask yourself is where is the vertex of the angle? The vertex can happen in four different places. In the center, on the circle, inside the circle, outside the circle. The, the vertex is basically saying, where do the two lines intersect and meet? So as a reminder, if it is a central angle, that the arc is going to equal the angle. So if I was solving this problem here, the angle is 40 degrees, therefore the arc would also be 40 degrees. Over here, um, when it's on the circle, we have our point on the circle, and so here it's arc equals two times the angle. So if the angle is 30 degrees, I would say x equals two times 30, and that would give us um, 60 degrees. When it is inside the circle, always think inside add. So notice these two lines here are intersecting inside the circle. So it's not a question of where is x. x could still be out here. The question is, where do the lines intersect? The lines intersect inside. Um, so when it is inside, we're going to do arc plus arc is equal to 2 times the angle. So these are my arcs. So we would say 40 plus 20 is equal to 2 times x. x is the angle here. Um, so that would give us 60 equals 2x, and x would equal 30. Um, when it two lines intersect outside of the circle, we're going to subtract. So inside add, outside subtract. We do arc minus arc equals two times the angle. Remember to always do um, the bigger arc first. So here we would do 60 minus 30 equals two times the angle. The angle here is x. Um, so that gives us 30 equals 2x. x would equal 15. Moving on everybody's favorite, the chord lengths. We have PP, wee, wee, wet. So remember, when the lines are intersecting inside the circle, we're not talking about angles anymore. We're talking about the lengths of segments. That's when we're going to use PP. Part times part equals part times part. Um, for wee, wee, that is when we have two lines that go outside the circle. We're going to do whole times exterior equals whole times exterior. Please remember that when you are doing the whole line, that you add these pieces together. So this whole here would end up being x plus 3. This whole segment here would be 10 plus 2, or 12. And then wet is when we have whole times exterior equals tangent times the tangent. That's when you have one secant line and one tangent line. Um, so really, you can think of it as tangent squared. Moving on, we have the equation of the circle. The equation of the circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where x and y represent any point that is on the circle, h, k represents the center of the circle, and r represents the radius of the circle. So if I gave you this example here and said, what can you tell me about that circle? You can tell me that the center is at 5, it is at negative 3. So remember, these signs are built in as negative. So if you see a plus sign, that means it's actually negative 3. 
Uh, and then the radius, to find that, we just square root the number at the end. So square root of 16 gives us 4. And then the last thing, we had that pizza cutter looking problem um, where we asked the question, is it tangent? And so you just need to remember that when you have a pizza cutter, you're going to do Pythagorean theorem. We're essentially asking, is this a right angle? Um, for this problem, you just need to remember that all radii are the same. If this is a radius of 3, then this would be a radius of 3 as well. 3 plus 2, add this whole segment, we get 5. And now we're essentially checking, is 5 squared equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared? And yes, indeed it is. Therefore, that line would be tangent. All right, that is it for that top 5 and under 5. Thank you for watching. I know it. Now you know.